Well, hello class, uh, welcome back. This is recording number two. So now we're gonna start going over annuities and that's when we're gonna go into our loans and repayments by yearly amount or a frequent period. So I recommend getting this BA2 plus or another BA financial calculator. It really helps with the annuities, finding interest rate for the annuities, time periods, or the present value or any of those features that you need. Makes it a lot easier. It has all the buttons right here for the annuities and all the things you need. Make sure that you either reset everything to zero or plug in the proper number when you guys are using it. And Professor Duncan was nice enough to put over a, a pretty well uh, layout formulas on how to use it on the Gaucho Space website. And if you need some extra help, feel free to come to office hours Monday or set an appointment with me and I'll go over it more. But now let's go over some annuities. So we know that our basic A angle N or annuity immediate is equal to one minus V to the N over I. And this annuity immediate means it is on the timeline due at time one, not at time zero. So the first payment would be here. Now an annuity due would be, and that is the double dot angle N, that is equal to one minus V to the N over D or that is equal to one plus I of A angle A. And the difference between annuity due with the double dots to annuity immediate is the annuity due has the first payment at time zero. So you have to pay it now, it's due. The payment is due, it's like rent. You pay at the beginning of each month. So also some more other important formulas that you need to know besides those two, of course, is the continuous one, which is a bar, angle N, which is equal to one minus V to the N over delta, where delta is the continuous rate, you guys are aware, and I'm sure you guys all remember that V to the N is equal to one over one plus I to the N, or you can make it one minus E to the negative delta to the N, in this case scenario as you guys know how to go between delta and i at this point. So either way works, just make sure everything is in the right units. Some other important formulas are the increasing annuity. Angle n is equal to a dot dot angle n, a double dot angle n minus n times d to the n divided by i. Remember between to get the double dot and the no dots or the immediate to do, you multiply by one plus i, and that's how you go between the two. Then we have the decreasing annuity. Angle n, and that is equal to n minus a angle n over i. Then let's say we have a geometrically increasing annuity. So each increases by a percentage each year, or each payment. So that would be equal to Geo, that is equal to one minus one plus G over one plus I to the N plus one divided by I minus G. And this would be in the annuity immediate formula. So if you want it by due, just divide by the uh, factor, the interest rate factor multiplied by V, and you have an immediate due then, or the geometric due. And here the G is the um, factor or rate that we increase it by. So if it was 3%, we increase each payment by 3%. That could be our G, and we plug our G in here. Now, increasing annuities and decreasing annuities, the uh, number in front of it, let's make it X, is the amount our payment increases by each time. So if we go from, so, We'll do a quick timeline example on how this works here. If we go from x to 2x to 3x, then we would have an increasing annuity that pays x amount per year. But if we have 2x and then go to 3x, and then that continues at that pattern, we would have the increasing annuity, and we'll add the double dot, we have to have the double dots there, 
which is multiplied by one plus n. And then we would also have to add the annuity due. Because here, we can only increase by one each time, as that is our factor in front of this. So we also need to account for the other x. So it's also nice to break it up. We can break this up to make it more familiar. So what we've done would be x to two x, dot, 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 and then it would be x, x, and x. And then we know exactly how to work with that. Now, let's go over some quick examples. So, Tom takes out a $1,000 loan. $1,000 loan, and we'll repay it in 10 years. In 10 years, interest rate is 6%. I had 6%, but 10 years. And we want to know how much Tom will be paying at each time period and each year, and the first payment is due today. So it's immediate annuity due, we know, because it's due today. And then we want to know at year eight, Tom decides, you know what, I'm done paying it. I have the money. Let's just pay off the rest of the loan at time eight. So we're going to figure out how much Tom will have to pay off at that time to be out of the loan. So first to do this, since we need to find out, A, the amount of value we pay at each time or Tom pays at each time, and then what we have at time eight, we just need to see first the X. So we know we, Tom owes $1,000, and it is an immediate due. So it's due now, 10 years at 6% interest rate. So we have, this is one minus D to the N over D. Divide that and we get X is equal to 128.17. I recommend doing this on your own, the two, just to get the practice. And then we figure out, then you guys can know exactly if you're doing it right or go through the steps, there's no how to do it. Now, we have to figure out how much Tom owes at time eight, because that is the time where he wants to get out of the loan and pay off the rest of uh, his funds. So at time eight, Tom has two payments left, right? The payment at year nine and a payment at year 10. So he has those two payments. So it is, if to take the present value of that, right? So we would be an A angle two, A double that angle two at 6%. And what will Tom be paying? The same X we had earlier, or $128, pretty much. Is that eight? About $128. So we know that would be 128 times one minus V to the N all over D. And this is D here because it's still the immediate annuity due. We started with the annuity due, so we have to continue with the annuity due. Unless we say, Tom just made his seventh payment at the beginning of next year. He wants to get out of it. Then we would change it to annuity immediate, but that's not what the question says. It says at year eight, he decides to pay off the rest of his loan. So we just have to find out the present value because the, the present value is how much he owes at that time. And this would be equal to $249.5. Oh, remember, the two to this question, first, we started with the X, or finding out our X and the amount we pay yearly. And then from that, we had to figure out what the present value would be at time eight. And at time eight, we had two payments left. So we knew it was two payments. So another formula for that is to find the present value in a future time would be A double dot angle N minus our current time T. So let's say we have gone through all our payments. Let's double check this. So our once we've done all the payments, n would be equal to t, right? So at time 10, we had n, which is equal to 10. And we're going to set t equal to 10, saying we have all our payments. Let's double check our edge cases. So if t is then equal to 10, we'd have a dot dot 10 minus 10, which is 0. And the present value of 0 payments is 0. So it works out. Now, let's say, let's go to our second example. This one's gonna be slightly different. You won the lottery 
We won the lottery, guys. The lottery will pay you $100 every year. Every year. And $200 on every odd year. So that means you're going to have $100 on the even years and $100 on the odd, and $200 on the odd years. Apologize for my sloppy handwriting. I'll get better at writing lefty. Not a natural lefty, as I'm sure you guys can tell. So let's draw a timeline. And right now, this is 2020, so we're in an even year. So we know we get $100 this year. Then we get $200 the next year. Then we get $100. Then we get $200. Dot, dot, dot. Or we can break this up into $100 each year. Mm -hmm. This may look familiar to what we did last time, and then another $100 every other year. So this is interesting, right? We get the $100 every year, which we could do, which we know how to do that. That is an annuity due, but it goes on forever. So we know an annuity due goes on forever. A double dot angle. Infinity, we have one minus V to infinity over D, right? And what is something when you raise it to the infinity power if it's less than one? Zero. You can also just, if you don't believe that, plug in like 0.99 to the infinity on your calculator or to like 100,000, and you'll see it's pretty much exactly zero. So once we do get to infinity, it will technically be exactly zero once you reach that, you know, magical number of non-existence. So how are we going to get the present value of this case scenario because it's slightly different. So let's start with the $100 that we know how to do. So we have the $100, A dot um, infinity, and oh, I forgot to give you I is equal to 6%. Now I do a lot of I equals 6% to you guys know just because going between uh, I and D is pretty easy. We know at this case, I is equal to 6%. D is then equal to 5.66%. So that, just by doing these questions with time, you'll pick that up and remember that. So it'll be pretty easy for you. That's why I like to stick with the I is equal 6% examples. We'll go other, other, other numbers later on. But a lot of questions that I've seen pretty much use these numbers that you remember because you'll see them so often. Or it'll, you won't have to switch back and forth. So we know this is 100 times 1 over 0.0566. Or, or that's also equal to 100 divided by D. So that's one of them. But we have to also add in what we get paid in the odd years. So we know it's every other year. So from the theory of interest we did last week, we're going to have to figure out our D for two time periods. So 1 minus D to the 2 squared over, you have to figure out what this is. So that's equal to 1 plus i squared. So 1 plus i squared is 1.06 squared, which is equal to 1.1236. And then from here, we need to figure out the D, or the discounting rate for this time period, to be able to do the annuity due for the perpetuity. And yes, a uh, annuity that goes on forever is considered a perpetuity. So if you ever see the word perpetuity in one of your exam questions or on the homework, it means infinite amount of time periods. So note from this, so 1.1236, so we know we subtract 1 to get i is equal to the i prime, I'll call it. So d prime is then equal, we know how to do this, is equal to pretty much 0 0.11. So now, now we know exactly how to do that. So we also have to add the $100 in here at the 6%, a dot dot angle infinity at the 0.1236%. And I always put the I here just so you could put the other one, just make it clear. I'm always going to put I. And I think that's just how it's normal and that's what people do. Or that's what I've always seen in questions and in work. So we know how to get our D, which is 11%, which is equal then 100 over 0.11, but that'll get us our present value here at time one. So since we're at time one, we need to discount that one year to figure out exactly how much it is due 
at time zero because we need to find out the present value of all these time payments. So we have our 100 divided by 0 0.0566 plus our 100 divided by 0 0.11 for the odd years and then the even years we have. And then we also need to discount the odd years by V. And in this case, we know V is 1 over 1.06. That will be our answer, which is equal to 2,624.42. And there you go, guys. Uh, I hope to see you guys in section. If there's anything you guys are confused about, please feel free to show up office hours or just show up to uh, class and we can go over everything more in section. I'll be happy to help. You guys are always free to send me an email. And make sure you guys submit your homework. It is due Tuesday at 8 a.m. No late homeworks accepted, as you guys are well aware. So get on top of it. You guys are all doing great in the class. Keep up the great work. And I'll see you guys soon.